Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today we have a special guest. His name is Mr. Gary Christensen. You might call him the Deviant Investor. That's a great name and a great website, DeviantInvestor.com. And I'll be asking about that as well. Uh, uh, Mr. Christensen is a market uh, expert. And uh, although, uh, just a quick disclaimer, um, you know, we are not registered investment advisors. We're not telling you what to buy, what to sell. Uh, so make sure you read carefully the, um, the disclaimer at the beginning of this and every video. Uh, but Mr. Christensen has plenty of expertise in commodities, gold, silver, the markets, and uh, other things that we're going to tap into his insight today. So first of all, Mr. Christensen, thank you so much for joining me today. Certainly enjoy the chance to chat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, th this is a, a, a real treat for me. Um, and I want to just start with your background, if that's okay with you, uh, because your background involves uh, not just finance, although, uh, you know, 30 plus years of financial, uh, you know, study and expertise, but also uh, a background in physics. Is that true? That's true. I have a bachelor's degree in physics, and I went on to graduate school in physics. Um, I passed the qualifying exams for my Ph.D., but I did not finish the dissertation, so I don't actually have the Ph.D. I have what they call all-but dissertation. Um, and then from there, I realized I didn't want to do that anymore and decided, well, I need to do something to keep myself alive. So I decided to become a cab driver as a temporary thing in downtown Seattle, which is really a basically really dumb choice. <laughs> And, and from there, I decided that um, accounting was made sense, so I started learning accounting. And eventually, I realized I needed to leave Seattle and just go do something different. So I went to Alaska for 20 years. Mm. In, in fact, interestingly enough, 40 years ago today was the day I arrived in Alaska. Um, in Barrow, which is the farthest north point in Alaska, that's 330 miles north of the Arctic Circle. And there I gradually became um, business manager for the school district in Barrow. And then I retired from that. And since then, I've been more or less in Texas and Colorado and various other places watching markets and investing in, um, and trading. Hmm. Wow, that, that's fascinating. Um, uh, Mr. Christensen, I should mention, is also a prolific uh, author, uh, author of several books, including Fort Knox Down, Gold Value and Gold Prices, 1971 to 2021. Uh, he has also published uh, or uh, written articles for 321gold.com, peakprosperity.com, and others. Um, but I'm just curious about the, uh, the fact that you did your graduate works, work in physics uh, ABD, as they say, all but dissertation. Uh, does does that type of learning uh, come to bear in uh, in your investing and trading? Well, I see things in terms of data and mathematics and numbers. I don't see things in terms of of um, what I consider more soft interpretations. I would I want to see numbers and data that tell me something. So I like to look at 100-year trends. I like to look at 50-year trends. I tried. I created a model of the gold market in and that I published in that uh, gold value, gold prices, 71 to 2021, and that's an outgrowth of my understanding of mathematics and physics. Um, and I can briefly discuss that. But the gist of that is the um, the gold market. You know, everyone looks at the gold market and says, well, it's like the stock market. Who knows what it's going to do? And I'm my point was, actually, you can, if you look at a broad enough perspective, you can evaluate the gold market from a macroeconomic point of view and create a reasonable expectation for the price of gold based on three variables that have nothing to do with gold. And the three variables are national debt, which is the most important, the price of crude oil, and the price of the S&P 500 index. Put those together into a complex formula, and out comes reasonable projections for the price of gold. And that's what that whole book was about, was just defining that. And the point I was trying to make was that we can get distracted by news, we can look, or we can get overwhelmed by, oh, they're doing this to us, they're doing that to us, the government's doing this, the Federal Reserve is doing that. But in the big picture, and this is what I think is important, in the big picture, look at the long-term trends. 
debt is going up outrageously the stock market goes up right along with it is the stock market really getting higher or is it just the value of the money is getting less and the truth is the value of the money is much less we're devaluing as we go and consequently the price of gold the price of silver the price of crude oil the price of the S&P the price of Dow etc etc goes up along with it because the dollar is being devalued that's the critical point yeah Absolutely. Your uh, latest book, Buy Gold, Save Gold, and uh, I'm going to put that uh, in the description as well as your uh, website and contact information. <clears throat> Buy Gold, Save Gold, the 10K logic. What is the 10K logic? Well, I'm trying to say that I think gold has a very reasonable chance of getting to ten thousand dollars not tomorrow not this year probably not until 2022 or so possibly even a couple of years after that but if you look at a hundred years of data if you look at 50 years of data if you look at the last 20 years of data if you look at the trends for the for gold for crude oil for the s p whatever you see exponential increases exponential increases with obvious breaks of of uh, collapses and crashes here and there and, and uh, bubble markets moving up and so forth just project that the price of gold must go much higher um, we're not going to stop deficit spending we're not going to stop deficits we're not going to stop national debt going through insane numbers so the dollar will devalue and the price of gold will go up that's the basic tenet of the book is that you can reasonably expect price of gold to go substantially higher and $10,000 sounds crazy, but it's really not, and that's the point that I'm trying to make in the book. And then I use um, a number of different examples for that, a number of different um, interpretations and ways of looking at it to suggest that $10,000 gold is not at all unreasonable. That's the point of the book. Now, if somebody wanted to invest in gold, but they did not want to bother with uh, storage, uh, insuring it, uh, you know, delivery, all that stuff, maybe uh, GLD or if they're into silver, SLV, ETFs, is that a good way to go? Um, that is an okay way to go for a trader. My personal preference would be to do something else. Um, there are a number of other alternatives that um, – probably are a little more reliable in my opinion and this is just an opinion but if you trade CEF which is um, a closed in gold fund that is actually closed in Canadian fund that's partially gold and partially silver they actually have the gold and the silver in their vaults and it's real um, to the best of my knowledge GLD and SLV are a little more iffy, and they depend, and in fact, I believe you can read in their prospectuses, and I depend upon the attorneys to do this, but um, you can read in their perspectives that they may use uh, derivatives and, and paper gold and paper silver to back this. Um, I think those are good trading vehicles. I wouldn't consider them a really long-term investment, because what if some of those um, gold and silver bars that are supposedly there really aren't? Um, mm -hmm. I, that's why I like something like CEF where it's really there. Um, Sprout has um, Sprout out of Canada has a number of eight, uh, ETFs and so forth. There are a lot of other possibilities, and um, I'm just saying be careful with um, the two major ones, GLD and SLV. Um, although I do like them for trading. Right, absolutely. Um, wanted to talk about your website, Deviant Investor. That's a fascinating name. Um, Two, two questions, if I may. Uh, what can people expect to see at DeviantInvestor.com, and what services uh, do you offer to people who visit DeviantInvestor.com? Well, frankly, I don't offer any services. I'm not selling anything, uh, you know, other than a little bit, little bit of advertising, which pays me a few dollars a month on the website. Um, not selling anything, not really offering services. I'm just trying to talk about uh, the topics: gold, silver, the economy, and central banking. Those are the only topics I'm interested in. Um, I publish an article a week, roughly, sometimes two of my own, and then um, sometimes one or two or three of from others that I like. So there's not a lot of activity on the site. Um, I mean, not a lot of publications on the site. It's just there for educational purposes, clearly with the agenda of, of uh, uh, encouraging people to consider, actively consider gold and silver as investments and to be careful of and suspicious of central banking and the stories that come out of Wall Street and the Federal Reserve. Sure, and I, I'm looking at your articles on the website right now. People really should visit it, uh, just for the. Uh, I mean, you've got uh, you know you got your articles about, like you said, gold, silver, the economy in general, central banking, 
all kinds of goodies on here. Um, your article titles include Dow Euphoria, The Return of Stagflation, Major Markets at Turning Points. Are we at a turning point? What's 2017 going to look like um, in the long term? Well, um, I have my opinions. They're only opinions, but these are the things I look at. We have a bond market that's had a 35-year bull market. Um, it peaked, the bond market peaked, which means interest rates fell to a minimum uh, roughly July, August of 2016. So for 35 years, the bond market kept going up. For 35 years, interest rates kept declining. Um, some people have evaluated that as as multiple generational um, lows in interest rates. Some people have said 500-year low in interest rates. Regardless, it's a very deep low. And the concern I have is that if you've had 35 years of declining interest rates and now you've got indication that the interest rates are rising, um, I worry that uh, that we've got um, many years of, of rising interest rates ahead of us or at least um, – slowly increasing interest rates ahead of us. So I'd be a little worried about bonds at this point. Um, the stock market is at all-time highs. Everybody's euphoric. I mean, what could go wrong? And, of course, when you start asking what could go wrong and what's uh, uh, how wonderful is it, it's time to consider uh, looking at um, other alternatives. If you look at gold and silver, they've come down a long way, whereas the stock market is at a very high, a very high level, measured by any number of evaluations, whether it's price to earnings or any number of other things. Um, it's high, but the, the thing that I think about the stock market that's important is, let's not take my opinion. Let's take the opinion of John P. Hussman, Ph.D., who is um, writes a, a printer, you know, a regular. Um, column. He's head of Houseman Funds. This right. man's brilliant. Yeah. Here's what he says. We expect S&P 500 annual nominal total returns to average just 0.6% over the coming 12-year period, even if underlying economic growth accelerates to historically normal rates. Wow. You know, that's a pretty impressive statement. And this is an extremely brilliant man who basically says we're not going to have any gain in the S&P for the next uh, 10 to 12 years. Then he says, and I think this is really important when it comes to thinking about pensions, and our estimate of the prospective total return on a conventional portfolio mix of 60% stocks, 30% bonds, and 10% T-bills has never been lower. Given that, that we expect the returns on the t typical pension plan mix to be low, terribly low, and that they're projecting, say, 7.5%, 8% return, not going to get it. Pension plans are going to be failing. If pension plans are failing, if the stock market's at an all-time high, you can expect essentially no growth in the stock market for a decade, which means you can pretty well plan on some corrections, some probably fairly major corrections. Sure. He talks about a 50% correction, which means to me that it's time for a cyclic transition from uh, bonds and stocks into gold and silver and other commodities. Of course, the ones I focus on are gold and silver. But that just means to me the timing is such, and I'm not saying this day or this week, but in this general period of time, it's time to phase out of paper assets and move into more real assets. Sure. Um, wanted to talk about silver. I like silver a lot. And you have some interesting uh, statements here on your website, bold statements, if you will, but I like them. The inevitable long-term direction of silver prices is upward, and the risk of lower prices is small. What's the evidence? Well, okay, if you look at uh, the price of silver going back 100 years, and I have, and you put a graph of, take a graph of that, which I have some in various places on my website as well as in the upcoming book, you can see that silver has gone up exponentially since, um, well, you know, roughly 1913 when we started um, doing the Federal Reserve stuff. If you look at um, the price of silver, and I've got it here. You, I can see a compound rate from January of 1917 to January of 2017, 100 years, a compound rate of a little over 4% per year each and every year as the average trend on that silver price. It's currently low compared to its trend, and uh, it's currently way low compared to its high that it reached six years ago this month. You know, to April of 2011, it reached almost 50 bucks. Now it's down to like 18 and change. Um, silver has a substantial move up. If we're going to devalue the dollar, 
as we will, if we're going to keep increasing debt, as we will, if we're going to keep um, massively spending more money than we have, as we will, then you can expect gold and silver to re increase in value substantially. The Dow has already had all its move. The bonds have had its move. It's time for commodities to move up. And that's why I think silver is a, a surefire winner um, and also a certain to scare the daylights out of you as silver goes high and low because it will fly higher and then crash lower than anything else around. Interesting. Volatility in, in silver. I'm looking forward to that as a trader, for sure. Uh, I, I know your time is uh, important to you. Just one more question, if I may. Um, the traditional mix of, let's say, SPY, TLT, and GLD, uh, that old formula, does that still work in today's markets? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. I think I'd, um, if you were going to take that formula, I would uh, certainly decrease the emphasis on stocks and bonds and increase the emphasis on gold. Again, because we're at all-time highs on stocks and bonds, and we're not on gold. So why not uh, shade a little more in favor of gold? A little more defensive. Can't blame you especially in this market uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, Mr. Gary Christensen, if people want to contact you to find out more information, is the best way to do it through your website, or how can they, how can they get in touch with you? Certainly, it's available on my website. I've just got a, a Gmail address there. Um, if they want to buy my book, it's on Amazon. Um, it's list, that's listed on the website also. Um, I just encourage people to come and look at Deviant Investor for a slightly um, more uh, – different approach to things not the non-standard it's a non-standard wall street view i'm not taking the wall street view not particularly in favor of central banks um, i do like looking at hard assets that don't have any counterparty risk so come to the website and just read what i have to say and then move on and evaluate for yourself i totally agree uh, there's there's so much uh free to the public information here on DeviantInvestor.com. Buy gold, save gold. Sounds good to me. I'm, I'm going to add silver into the mix too, if I may. <laughs> the 10K Logic. That's Mr. Christensen's latest book available on Amazon. And check out the website as well. Uh, Mr. Christensen, I really appreciate your time today. This has been very inspiring to me. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks a lot.